So I'm going to start you off with some dreaded audience participation. I want a show of hands if you have ever written a fiction story or thought about writing a fiction story ever in your life. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's, every, that's every, just about everybody. That's awesome. All right. Um, well, I also want you to think back to your school career and how many times did you actually get to write a fiction story? Not very much. Most of the time, you're writing essays, you're writing book reports, you're doing math sometimes. Um, but <laughs> what we really like to uh, do is at the... Uh what I'd like to say is I spend a lot of my free time teaching kids to write fiction at the Greater Seattle Bureau of Fearless Ideas, or the BFI. Woo! Love people who know that place. It's a great place. And uh, we like to emphasize three things for the kids while they're learning to write fiction. The first part about it is uh, changing their perspective. Changing their perspective on people, changing their perspective on the world. We like to teach them creative problem solving. And uh, most importantly, we like to teach them a growth mindset. Now, when I say we're changing perspective, downstairs in the lobby, uh, we have an activity that some of you participated in where we have a genre matrix where we're trying to map our favorite books onto uh, scales of future to past, science to magic. And this is something I walk the kids through every summer when I teach my sci-fi and fantasy workshop. What we, this likes to do is it takes books out of their silos that bookstores and libraries put them in and say, hey, all the books are related to each other. They all sort of have this thing going on, and your stories can be wherever you want them to be. And that way, they can start to think outside the box. They can start thinking about where their characters are coming from. Why are they acting the way they're acting? Why is the bad guy a bad guy? Which then leads them to think, why is the bully a bully? Why is my boss acting that way? Who had a really bad day? And so it really helps the kids learn to get along better with their peers and in relation to that, as an adult, get along better with other adults and even their own kids. This leads into creative problem solving. So kids really like to put themselves in their stories, if you haven't noticed. Um, so a lot of times, they'll try to work out their problems in their stories, whether it's trying to figure out why somebody's being mean to somebody else or which dog stole which other dog's toy. Uh, sometimes they get a little more serious. Um, one of my favorite students was talking about nuclear waste the other day, and uh, one of my favorite quotes came out of his story, which should be popping up behind me in a second. Um, but regardless of how serious a problem, <laughs> regardless of how serious a problem is that the kids are writing about, this gives them a chance to practice finding a solution. This gives them a chance to try new things, and maybe they say, oh, this one particular solution doesn't give me what I want for this character. This doesn't actually give me the outcome I was expecting, so, Let's try something new, which leads us to the growth mindset. The growth mindset is in direct opposition to what most of us probably grew up with, which is a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset says, I failed. That's it. I'm done. Uh, I have a certain set of skills. I have a certain set of talents that I am born with, and I can't do any better than that. Uh, I'm no good at math. I'm no good at acting. I'm no good at public speaking, whatever it is. The growth mindset, however, wants the kids to view failure as an opportunity. You try something new. You try it again. You keep going. Thankfully, video games really help with this because you just keep going after that boss till you find the right combination, right? So with the growth mindset, it allows them to try these new solutions. It allows them to try new perspectives on their characters, try new villains, try new sidekicks. See what happens in your stories. We really like to emphasize creative editing when it comes time to look at their stories. We try weird things like cutting apart our papers and taping them back together uh, into one giant scroll so you're looking at things in a completely different perspective. Uh, all of these things really help them start to dig in and find out what makes the stories tick. So this really helps them in the future when they're looking at jobs, when they're looking at stuff in their schoolwork, to say, hey, it didn't work. I got the wrong answer. Well, what the math teacher thinks is the wrong answer, I still think it's the right answer, but how do I fix this? So, in summary, and it wouldn't be complete if I didn't give you homework, so, if you haven't participated in the Matrix downstairs, I'd love for you to go put your favorite books on the Matrix so we have a really good representation of everybody here. And there's a slip of paper with a lot of resources, including downloadable worksheets to start writing your own stories. And uh, I really want you to get out there, 
dig out that story you thought you'd never write, start working your worksheets, and one of these days, I look forward to reading it myself. Thank you very much. Thank you.